Welcome back to Gillette Stadium, where for the past 10 days, the big storyline, the big question, how will the chemistry and the timing improve between Tom Brady and his young wide receivers? Well, the good news, we know they've had a lot more practices between game one and game two. We only had five days in between, which meant only three walkthroughs. This time around, 10 days in between that Thursday night game versus the Jets, and they actually had four practices, one in full pads. The wide receiver saying the timing is there, and Kevin and John, I know that Tom Brady did tell you guys they've taken the coaching very, very well, and this is going to take a lot of work, a lot of coaching, and a lot of repetition. Julian Edelman is the one guy that doesn't need more repetitions, John. He was certainly on the same page with Tom Brady last week against the Jets, and he faces... Darrell Revis in this Buck secondary that's performed very, very well. Bill Belichick has his team at 2-0 in his 14th season. Bucks won the toss and they deferred, so they will kick it off. Michael Kanan will do the honors and kick this one out of the end zone as LeGarrette Blunt watches on. And Tom Brady with 50 straight games with a touchdown pass, trying to make it 51 this afternoon. Well, and Tom Brady, we all saw the frustration on Thursday night. He feels confident that the practice time, you see the offensive line, Logan Mankins leads that group up front. And you see Stephen Ridley, explosive, good running back, got to hold on to the football. Kendrell Tompkins, one of those rookie receivers we're talking about. Arrivas, top of your screen, first and ten for the Pats. And they set up a screen to Bolden. He's got good room, and he's got a first down for New England. Amon Black came up to make the stop. But Brandon Bolden getting a look. He's been out the first two weeks with a knee injury. Well, and this is something that the New England Patriots do so well. Their offensive line gets out and blocks. And you're going to see right here a great block by Dan Connolly on Gary Gibson, and Gary Gibson down as a result. Well executed screenplay, good yardage for the Patriots to start out the game. Yeah. Gibson is laying down, and they tend to the seventh year man from Rutgers. We'll take a break as well. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. Gary Gibson, the injured player, is off, and for the Patriots, it's a first and ten. Their second play of the game. With five wide for Brady. And incomplete. Brady going far side of the field for Josh Boyce, the rookie, getting his first action today as well. This Tampa defense has played well so far. Certainly the push from Gerald McCoy up the middle. Claiborne's been good on the end, but John, their linebackers have been outstanding. They've been fantastic, led by Mason Foster and Levante David. They both have been active in the run game and the pass game. Bill Belichick calls these safeties. Mark Barron and Deshaun Goldson, probably the best we'll see all year. High respect, high praise from Bill Belichick. Get the pass go five wide. And Brady finds Edelman, who's got it up to the 40-yard line. Julian Edelman with Leonard Johnson on the stop. Edelman coming off a career-high 13 catches against the Jets. Let's go back to the first play. Here's the injury to Gary Gibson. And I think it's important to point out, perfectly legal block by Dan Connolly. They've been, been, been cracking down on the peel-back blocks, but that's legal all the way. Just a good play by Dan Connolly. Good physical play, but it's got Gary Gibson out. Patriots have Zach Sudfeld, rookie tight end, and Edelman in the slot. Brady pressured, side steps, side steps, another, still on his feet, but now he's going to go down. Levante David got his hands on him first. Mark Barron was there as well. well. One of the things that has revealed itself with Tom Brady getting used to these new wide receivers is he's holding the ball longer than I've ever seen Tom Brady hold the ball. We're so used to seeing him get back, get the ball out of his hands. It's the initial pressure by Mark Barron. He gets him off his spot. Levante David there to finish it off. Ryan Allen, the rookie punter from Louisiana Tech, is averaging 44 yards a kick. We'll get it away. Close, maybe got a piece to the Bucks. That'll roll down right around the 30-yard line. 
And so Tampa has their first possession after forcing the Patriots to punt it away. And here comes Josh Freeman, who has had an inconsistent first two weeks, to say the least. Well, there's no doubt about it. And he, frankly, he needs to get going. And I believe they've really got to show more trust in him. You look at the end of last week, an important third and six. They run the football, not showing a lot of trust in your quarterback. I think Josh Freeman's got to trust his instincts and just go play and let it go out there on the field today. And on first down, they give it to Doug Martin, who's coming off a 144-yard effort last week. Gerard Mayo makes a stop. Carl Nix, the two-time Pro Bowler, is back at left guard. A huge boost for this offensive line. But Tampa's trying to get somebody else involved other than Vincent Jackson. And Doug Martin, and the Patriots are very aware of those two. The Patriots always try to take away your best, your number one options, and so it's incumbent upon guys like Mike Williams to step up to the forefront and have a big game today. That's Vincent Jackson in motion. Second and seven. Freeman arrow out for Mike Williams, who makes the grab. And Williams is going to go out of bounds at the 39-yard line. Alfonso Dennard made the stop, and it's a 28-yard hookup. Well, on cue, Mike Williams is going to see a lot of one-on-ones one -on with Vincent Jackson having the success. He gets it with Dennard, and he wins. So important for him to win to open up this offense. You can't just rely on one receiver, as the Bucks have been doing through two weeks. That's Williams' his seventh catch of the season. They get him involved early. Vincent Jackson against a key to lead. That's the matchup top of your screen on a first and ten. Freeman to Williams again. He's down to the 31-yard line for eight yards. So already getting Williams involved against this Patriot defense. And Rob Ninkovich, maybe the one of the most underrated players in the NFL. And, of course, you have Vince Wilford, an outstanding player in the middle. These linebackers, they're big. They move well. Bill Belichick type linebackers. And in the back end, David Mc Devin McCourty in the corner, Aqib Tlaib, who's going to be matching Vincent Jackson throughout the course of the game. Tampa's down there, starting two tight ends, by the way. So Nate Byam, number 82, is the starter today. He just came in motion. Second and two. Martin trying to finagle his way down to the first down and does so. Down to the 28. Tommy Kelly on the stop, gain of three. First down for the Bucks. It has been a tumultuous first couple weeks for Greg Schiano with all kinds of reports coming out of Tampa about dissension in the locker room with his coaching style. But the reality is, John, they're 0-2 by a combined three points, and a win would really help change that field. It's a play fake to Martin. Freeman's got time, and he overthrows Mike Williams, who gets decked on the play by Kyle Arrington. And you watch Vincent Jackson, who Josh Freeman was looking at. Aqib Tlaib gets hands on. He falls down. Freeman does a nice job of locating Mike Williams, but you have to make a more accurate throw. He misfires, throws high for Mike Williams. Well, the Patriots had Wilfork jump, but was he baited? And the initial indications are he will. Up start. Number 77 of the offense. Five yards. Penalty. Still second down. Jeff Triplett, our referee today. Well, here's Carl Nix, and this one looks really close. It looks like they both move at the same time. In fact, it looks to me as if Vince Wilfork initiated that. I think the Patriots get away with one right there. That is the updated stat. 24 penalties for the Patriots. That has been a huge bugaboo for them. Second and 15. And Jackson drops it. Well, Vincent Jackson has had a great first two weeks. He did have two drops earlier in the game against the Saints last week. Well, one thing about Vincent Jackson, he may have some drops early in the game, but Josh Freeman's going to keep going back to him. He's this go-to guy. This is a ball that Vincent Jackson expects himself to catch. I think the presence of spikes there coming his way might have had something to do with that drop. Bucks have to get down to the Patriot 18-yard line as the crowd into it in Foxborough.
Freeman's got time coming near side for Martin, who's matched up against Mayo, but he's going to be a little short of the first down. He gets it down to the 20-yard line. Mayo made the stop, 13-yard gain. It's going to be a little short, but that'll put him in a chance for a Ryan Lindell field goal. Well, we're very familiar with Doug Martin as a running back, but they really like him. And every time you talk to Josh Freeman, he loves the matchup with Doug Martin, particularly on a bigger linebacker like Gerard Mayo. Good job in coverage by Mayo, but good execution by the Buccaneers, putting him in good field goal position. So, be a 38-yard try, the hold of Michael Keenan. Andrew Economos on the snap. Ryan Lindell, who is no good. So Ryan Lindell, who missed a 47-yard field goal last week, would have put the Bucks up by four. Misses a 38-yarder to start for the Bucks, just what they didn't need. Tom Brady getting set to come back on the field. Today's game is sponsored by Bud Light, official beer sponsor of the NFL. Patriots take over. First and ten with Stephen Ridley back with Brady. He gets his first carry and skirts out across the 33. Here's the missed field goal by Lindell. And Kevin, you know, this is a guy that just missed a 47-yard field goal that could have won the game last week. Doesn't look like a real confident swing. I was not a kicker in the NFL. I did kick in high school. It just didn't look real confident. He hit it fat, and Greg Schiano says, come on, buddy, we need you. Well, that's a problem after what happened last week, especially it was a nice drive by the Bucs to try and get it started. It'll be a second four for New England. Brandon Bolden in a running back. Brady looks the other side of the field, has his first completion to the rookie, Aaron Dobson. That's good for a New England first down. We have our first game break of the day. We send it to Kurt Menefee. Well, the Bengals scored on the opening possession, then on the following kickoff, Jerome Ross. Muffs it away for Green Bay. Bengals scored on the very next play. Ben Jarvis, Green Ellis. It's 14-0. Bengals with the lead, Kevin, John, and Aaron, before Aaron Rodgers has even touched the ball. Wow, that's a heck of a start for Cincinnati, trying to make a statement. As the pass go to the ground once again, the Garrett Blunt, the former Patriot getting the call. We should mention about Ryan Lindell. He's essentially the third kicker for the Bucks. They have Con Connor Barth, who they signed to a contract again to bring him back. He gets hurt in a charity basketball game in the offseason. And then they bring in Lawrence Tynes, the former Giant, who has a, a bacterial staph infection, MRSA, and that's a whole other story. Um, but he, so Lindell is the third guy, uh, and now it's an issue for... Tampa, no doubt about it. Here's Bolden on a second down carry. He'll bring up a third and short as Mason Foster on the hit. Well, and you talk about for the Patriots, they put themselves in a very good third down situation and talking to Bill Belichick, the critical areas is where they need to improve. Third down, red zone is where they have not been good. A lot of adjustments with a lot of new targets, but they got to be better, and third down is where it starts. They were only 4 of 18 on third down against the Jets, and you're talking about a team that led the league at 48% last year. There it nice. is. His favorite target, Edelman in the slot. Third and three. Brady under pressure, has it knocked away. They're going for Bolden out of the backfield, but Mark Barron coming off maybe his best game as a pro there to knock it down. Well, last week versus the New Orleans Saints was not maybe his best game. It was his best game. Mark Barron, an excellent football player, and it came to the forefront last week. This is what he brings. Tremendous skill, tremendous length. They've got him in the nickel package as a linebacker, and the Patriots think about going for it on fourth down, but now bring their punt team out. And the Bucks trying to get all their personnel on as Page comes on last second back to receive. Punt from the rookie Allen. And left-footed punter gets it to Page and pulls a fair catch at the 11. And so the Bucks will start their second possession after a 42-yard punt. Doug Martin and the Bucks on offense. We come back. Today's game is sponsored by the 2013 Ford F-150 with EcoBoost. By KFC, the official sponsor of couch gating. KFC plus football equals couch gating. And by Gatorade. Gatorade knows it all begins within. Win from within. 
Third down's been a problem for the Patriots this year, and Tom Brady unhappy they couldn't convert that third and short. So now the Bucks go on offense. Their second possession, first and ten, back up at their own 12. Freeman stepping up, and down he goes. Pocket collapsing on Josh Freeman. And he had a couple of Patriots closing in, Rob Ninkovich and Chandler Jones. Well, you just talked about those two guys, Ninkovich and Jones. Ninkovich coming from the top of your screen, Jones coming from the other side. They've really become a force, establish, uh, establishing themselves as bookend forces on the edge for the New England Patriots. These two guys are special players. They're very excited about them here in New England. That's the fifth sack this Bucks line has allowed this year. Vincent Jackson, bottom of your screen, matched up against Aqib Tlaib. Here's Martin. And Doug Martin's going to find his way out to about the 14. We'll give him four. Tommy Kelly, the former Raider, makes the tackle. And third and long has been a constant theme with this Bucks offense this year. That's what they face right now. Yeah, it has. And they lead the NFL. Not something you want to lead it in. And the distance to go on third down. It's been an average of about 9.7 yards on third down tough to convert on third and long in the NFL third and eight Freeman's gonna air it out for Jackson who makes a nice leaping grab he caught it over Akeem to leave and he moves the change for the Bucks. Well, the Bucks do a great job of using their two best players. Watch this. They're going to fake a quick screen to Doug Martin. That creates the one-on-one -on -one with Vincent Jackson on a keep to leave, and that's a matchup they like, frankly. Vincent Jackson one-on-one -on, -one on anyone. Great deal of respect for Tlaib, but they like that matchup. Josh Freeman loves it. And Vincent Jackson so is why. Well, he's got four inches on a keep to leave, and he's got that ability. First down for the Bucks. That's Martin with Byam, the tight end in the backfield with him. And Martin working hard to get out to the 35. Picks up two. And when you talk about those third down and longs, Kevin, it seems as if the Bucks early in the year have established a, pat, a, a pattern of run on first down, run on second, and then third and long. That's tough on any quarterback. I think they'd be wise to put a little more trust in Josh Freeman on first and second down, more advantageous pass situations. That's by him in motion. The fullback Morig in the eye formation. Freeman has time, and he's got a wide open man, Mike Williams, for the first across the 45. And he's going to get out near the 48. Kyle Arrington on the tackle, but a 13-yard gain and a Bucks first down. You're going to see hard play action, very effective with Doug Martin back there. And then that's just a pretty pocket for Josh Freeman. He's got the time, and we called on Mike Williams. We said he's going to have to step up and win some one-on-ones. Early on, he's getting the job done. And Doug Martin helped on the blitz pickup with Brandon Spikes. He gives up 30 pounds to Spikes, but he did the job there. Doug Martin lined up as a wide receiver. He's at the top of your screen. On a first and ten, Martin a little high. I'm not sure if Martin saw it in time. And I like it by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Last time they faked the quick screen, the quick under to Doug Martin and throw it to Jackson. This time they throw it to Martin. Martin feels the presence of Rob Ninkovich, a big man in the middle. It sets up a second and ten. Tampa brings in Jamon Meredith as an extra tackle in this package, number 79. And they're running it behind him as Martin trying to bounce to the outside and does as he works it inside the 45. We go to Kurt Menevy for another game break. All right, the New Orleans Saints down 7-0 at home against Arizona. Quickly a race, beautiful pass through Breeze to Robert Meacham. Back in the Saints uniform and back in the game tied at 7. Kevin and John and Eric. I think Robert Meacham's happy to be back in New Orleans. We've seen that one before, as has Tampa. Third and short for the Bucs. They're one of two on third down today. 
They fake the pitch, and Jackson makes an athletic catch, and that'll be a first down. Already twice today, we've seen Vincent Jackson go up and use the hands and the strength to beat Aqib Tlaib. Well, and the key to that is getting in that manageable third down situation. That opens up the play playbook for an offensive coordinator. You see, again, the play action. You bring Jackson in motion. Good execution by the Bucks. And now they go up tempo and clearly had a miscommunication on that play. You don't see too much emotion out of Josh Freeman often, but he was ticked there. Well, he's a competitor, and I think he's been frustrated with the first couple of weeks and the, a lot of miscommunication. And look, Tom Brady's not the only guy playing with new receivers. That was Kevin Ogletree that Josh Freeman was dealing, a new receiver as well. Meanwhile, penalty on the Patriots. They're going to get him for substitution, and it was 12 men on the field. So despite the miscommunication, Patriots give the Bucks five yards as Mike Sullivan's offense in a pretty decent groove to start this game. They had the missed field goal on their first drive. Here's Doug Martin. And Martin doesn't go very far. Brandon Spikes came on to make the hit. I'll tell you one thing that the Buccaneers are happy about right now. You know, Greg Schiano talking about the offense, the keys to the game, about his offense. The last one he said was, look, we got to affect Tom Brady. And I'm looking at him like, offensively? How do you affect Tom Brady? He says, well, we keep him on the bench. And that's what they've done thus far. Now, you've got to cash that into points. We saw the missed field goal. You've got to turn it into points. Tampa winning the time of possession, that's for sure. Pressure coming. Freeman stands in. Then looking for Williams. And it came in from right, but we got a penalty flag. Arrington on the coverage and they may get him for pass interference. Pass interference, defense number 25. Ball he placed in the spot of the foul. First down. So there's Mike Williams working up top against former Buccaneer Kyle Arrington. And that's why we had him as a player to watch. You knew with the Patriots' style of defense. They were going to do everything to take Vincent Jackson out. Well, that creates one-on-ones on Mike Williams. He's winning that matchup right now. And how about Josh Freeman showing some confidence in his receivers? He's thrown it up there just three times today, letting him make plays. It's working. First and ten. He's got to get a lot of time firing for the end zone. Look at the line of traffic incomplete. There were literally six people over in that same area. I think he was looking for Mike Williams, and it's knocked down. The reason there were so many people in that same area, another miscommunication. Timmy Wright, a new tight end for the Buccaneers. You'll see he goes to the flat and then ends up in the same area as Mike Williams. A miscommunication. Someone ran, ran the wrong route, and the problem is that brings too many people to the party for the New, for the new England Patriots defense. 11th play of the drive. Remember, this started at Tampa's own 12-yard line. And Martin is going to work his way for a three-yard gain. You're going to look at a third down and seven coming up. Nikovich on the stop. And Kevin, we had the opportunity to meet with Rob Nikovich, and I, I really believe one of the more underrated players in this league. And you think about him, people think overachiever. He's not an overachiever. This guy's a stud. He's a playmaker, has been for the New England Patriots. They sure appreciate him. He has not missed a single play this year. And again, a third and long for the Bucks. Got to protect the football if you're Josh Freeman. Pressure from Will Ford. Freeman going end zone for right, just off the tips of the fingers. Would have taken a perfect throw to Tim Wright, who got open in the backside, but Tampa will try another field goal. And he makes close to a perfect throw. Timothy Wright, a converted wide receiver, a rookie tight end from Rutgers. And Josh Freeman puts it on him. you got to catch that football. And this is a matchup they like. As I said, a converted wide receiver in the NFL, you got to make that catch. Well, Bucks are looking for other guys to make plays. That's a play you got to make. Now it's Ryan Lindell from 30 yards out. He's already missed the 38-yarder. This one is good. And so the Buccaneers on the board first with an impressive drive, a 30-yard field goal from Ryan Lindell.
here in the first quarter from Foxborough. Bucks three, Pats nothing. Buccaneers have put together two impressive drives on the Patriots. Probably could have had a touchdown on that one, though, on a third down as Josh Freeman looked for Tim Wright in the back of the end zone. Wright could not corral it, and they settle for the Ryan Lindell field goal. But um, Freeman aggressive so far in this one, John. you got to like what you see for the Buccaneers offense, controlling the clock. And Josh Freeman throwing to multiple wide receivers. LeGarrette Blunt will take it out on the kickoff. He is not your traditional kick returner, and he comes up short of the 20-yard line. Tom Brady back on the field for the Patriots' third drive. Bucks almost getting six. They settle for three up a field goal here in the first quarter. Tim Wright, the rookie from Rutgers, still trying to figure out how he missed that ball in the end zone. Deshaun Goldson of the Bucks D playing well so far against Tom Brady. The Patriots have their third possession. Steven Ridley in the backfield. Brady fakes to him, pressure coming down, he goes, Adrian Claiborne comes in to get his second sack of the year. And again, Kevin, the consistent theme, Tom Brady holding the football, this is something, having played against Tom Brady, having watched Tom Brady, having studied him, you're not used to. The ball is usually out, Adrian Claiborne has time to get there, and he delivers. And this Bucks pass rush this year has come alive in a very big way. I mean, they haven't had 30 sacks in five years. That's their 10th sack already this year. It's been a major difference, and it's a loss of eight. Brady, a lot of time now, and firing over the middle, and he fires incomplete. John, so not custom to seeing a Patriot offense with Tom Brady struggle like this. You're right, and we just saw him right there again, double clutch with the football. But you have to look at, he's playing without his top five tar targets from last year. Wes Welker, he's not here. Rob Gronkowski, he's been hurt. Aaron Hernandez, we know that story. Brandon Lloyd, uh, Danny Woodhead, the list goes on. This is a whole new deal. Tommy said to us, look, September's about improving. We don't even know what we're good at. He felt like this last Four. week, getting 10 days of practice, as Aaron mentioned, was huge. And he said he's excited to see it unfold. Brandon Bolden in motion. He gets the ball. They try to set up a little screen play. He's out. To the 20 yard line. Adrian Claiborne came in to make the stop, but that is not going to be enough. And on comes for the third time the Pats punting unit. And so this Patriots offense, three possessions, three punts. The rookie Ryan Allen will get the left leg into this one. And sends off a rocket. Eric Page has a good return set up here, and he's going to work his way near the 45. Well, we talked about these Patriot receivers, and certainly times have changed with the Brady Bunch. And it started out with some terrific veterans. Troy Brown was here when Tom Brady got on the scene. We know what he did. Deion Branch, Super Bowl MVP, terrific clutch performer. And then going deep to Randy Moss and the run defeated Steven in 07. Wes Welker, who bolted this year for Denver. Patriots feeling that. Gronkowski still out injured. Hernandez is gone with the off the field stuff. Edelman has had a great year. Amendola's hurt already. Dobson, the rookie. They're trying to find it here. And you see, it's, a, it's kind of an ongoing thing for this Patriots offense. Strange to see. They've been such a well-oiled machine, but a lot of coaching being done in-game. First and ten for the Bucks and Freeman. Freeman a lot of time. Steps up, now the pocket collapses, and down he goes. Rod Mayo's going to come in and get the sack of Freeman. And that should take us to the end of quarter number one. Really just a tremendous job of coverage. That's a coverage sack. Josh Freeman's line did a nice job along with Doug Martin of giving him protection. Nobody was open at that point. Josh Freeman got to throw the football away. So each team with two sacks in this first quarter. We've come to the end of quarter number one. The Bucks have the three nothing lead over the Patriots. Second quarter action for Foxborough up next. We start the second quarter from Foxborough. Buccaneers with a three nothing lead over the Patriots and their football. Second and 11. It's Nate Byam starting tight end today in motion. Martin on the pitch. Nice cutback. That gap closed pretty quickly, though. Nice recovery. Brandon Spikes on the tackle after a five-yard run. Well, they had a welcome sight for Tampa Bay Buccaneer fans. It was Carl Nix, their big offensive lineman. Right here, he's going to pull out. 
Alfonso Dinner does a great job of a little shake and bake, getting out of the big man's way. But Carl Nix, an impressive game-changing player in the middle. In my mind, when healthy, the best interior offensive lineman in football. That's been a big key. The Bucks are keeping the ball away from Tom Brady. Third down to Bugaboo for Tampa, though. They're 18th in the league this year. They're one of five today. Brian Leonard in the backfield. Freeman over the middle has his man Mike Williams. He's got a first down down to the 39 yard line for Mike Williams Alfonso Dennard with the tackle 12 yard gain John you hit it They had to look for someone else and they're looking for Mike Williams today who has come up looking like he's hurt here Well, and it's been so critical for them. It's either Kyle Arrington or Dennard that's been drawing the coverage on Mike Williams and he's been winning the one-on-one -on -one matchup Josh Freeman's been hitting him you see just a little shake route across the middle. And Josh Freeman putting it on Mike Williams. And the Bucks hopeful that Mike Williams is indeed okay because as we've seen how critical he is in this game here today. Got to like that, sensing the defender covering the ball. He's already got four catches for 61 yards. He came in with only six catches total. And you see last week, the number so already he's been a huge factor targeted six times by Josh Freeman today on Fox a series premiere of being Mike Tyson the show critics are calling brutally honest and the most revealing portrait of Tyson yet you think you know him think again being Mike Tyson premieres today following football on Fox new episodes Tuesdays on Fox Sports 1 to find Fox Sports 1 on your provider go to FoxSports1.com Bucks on the move again. Vincent Jackson top of your screen against Akeem Talib. He's already had a couple of catches against him. Freeman with a lot of time. Going deep for Doug Martin. And he turns around and can't make the grab. Ball let him a little bit out of bounds. It was Dante Hightower there on the coverage. It's clear in the, in the game plan. The Patriots have bigger linebackers they feel like that's a matchup in there that favors the Buccaneers as well we've seen it twice and we've seen Freeman go to Doug Martin a near miss but he did have separation did Doug Martin on Hightower well they're clearly going to other options and Devin McCourty the Patriots did say to us in meeting with him this weekend first thing we watched in the tape on Wednesday film of Vincent Jackson in his big plays they're trying to go elsewhere here's James who gets the call, and he's inside the 35. Mike James, the rookie out of Miami, sixth round draft pick, it's his first carry of the year, and he picks up five yards. And really what it's been for the New England Patriots in an effort to take Vincent Jackson is this putting their best corner, a keep to lead. He's been following Vincent Jackson wherever he goes. The safety's not necessarily over the top, but an awareness of where Jackson is at all times. Mike Williams is back in the game. That's certainly a good sign. Vincent Jackson, that's him in motion, number 83, on a third and five. Pressure coming, Freeman throws it away. Tommy Kelly came with pressure up the guts. And for the fourth and five, I don't know if Shiano's thinking about going. Looks like he might try to press the tempo. We just talked about the matchup. There's a key to leave on Jackson and the Buccaneers up at the line of scrimmage. Trying to catch the Bucks here on fourth down. Freeman has time. Near side incomplete. No flag. Looking for Mike Williams. So they tried to catch New England in a switch and it didn't work. Well, there it is right there. Dennard working on Mike Williams. He's got a handful of jersey and then incidental foot contact. No pass interference. Maybe a hold. Alfonso Denner may have gotten away from one, but the Patriots hold on downs. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Windows Phone. Meet the new Windows Phone, the smartphone reinvented around you. By Lowe's. Lowe's never stop improving. And by the U.S. Postal Service. You see the end of that last play, the fourth down play, a fistful of jersey. They let that go, but a good call on the incident of foot contact with Dennard and Mike Williams. Go! Go! This is Stephen Ridley getting a call on first down for New England. Well, the Patriots are up 3-0 in this game. They are clearly not taking advantage of things. 
Chiano was not happy at the end of that play. He wanted a, a hold or something called on Dennard, but the Patriots haven't crossed midfield yet, and the, the Bucks, for all their plays, is Ridley again up to the 40, short game. Mason Foster was there, picks up two. Bucks have run 26 plays, John, 14 of them in New England territory, yet they've only got a field goal on the board. Well, and there's been so much good, and the, the problem is what, what you just ended with, only three points on the board. They've controlled the action. They've controlled the game in every sense, but you got to cash in. The missed field goal, three down, the missed three opportunity down. on the catch by Timothy Wright in the corner of that end zone. Can't do that on the road against the New England Patriots and expect to win. Third and four, that's Edelman in the slot. Brady Dunson wide open is his rookie wide receiver. It's Aaron Dobson. Dobson had some drops last week, and he bobbled that one, but he holds on for the Patriot first down. Well, he caught it about four times, but he did eventually catch it. You see Dobson working against Revis. Revis is going to go back in zone coverage. Dobson struggles to get it early, but does indeed bring it in. And you like the confidence of Tom Brady going right back to a a rookie wide receiver who had his struggles last week against the Jets. First play in Tampa territory. It's a good play fake. Brady's got all day, and he's looking for a man to key tight end Sudfeld, but it's incomplete. Now look at design play, but I want you to watch Edelman and Tompkins, both of them wide open. No one within 10, 15 yards. Tom Brady chooses to go to Sudfeld, and it's a touchdown without question if he drops it to one of those receivers. Wow. You don't see that often. He's so good at the play action, he got both safeties to suck right up. It's a weapon for the Patriots, but uncharacteristically, Tom Brady misfires and misses an opportunity. Second and 10, Ridley on the carry. Good gainer as he's inside the 40. We have a game break. Let's head to Kurt Menefee. Here's a nice looking pass. Matthew Stafford against the Redskins. Sidearm and Joseph Fourier goes up. Makes a sweet grab. I'm not quite sure about his touchdown celebration, but nonetheless, the Lions lead it by seven in the second quarter. Kevin, John, and Aaron. No Reggie Bush today for the Lions, but they find the end zone anyway. As Nate Solder, excuse me, that's Volmer, the right tackle, flexing the hand. Third down for the Patriots. One of four so far on third. And they snap it to the up man. It's Bolden trying to cut inside, and he's going to be short. Bucks played it well. Leonard Johnson from the secondary came up to support McCoy and others. And now to the Patriots go for it here. Bill Belichick throughout the years has been extremely aggressive on going for it on fourth down. Great hustle play by Gerald McCoy. Diving at the ankles, and then here comes the rest of the posse for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers defense. Well, they're going to go. Got to get to the 35. It's Julian Edelman, his favorite target thus far. Expect him to come in motion. Brady looking near south. He's got Dobson for a first down. Tom Brady again showing confidence in the rookie from Marshall, Aaron Dobson. And Aaron Dobson saying, thanks for the confidence, I'll bring it in. Big fourth down conversion for the New England Patriots. Considering coming into today, Kimbrell Tompkins and Aaron Dobson, the rookies, have only caught nine of 31 targets. Big start. Here's Edelman. Not much there. Patriots played well by Darrell Rivas, who yeah, he knows a thing or two about being out on the cornerback position. Well, I tell you, the opportunity to watch Darrell Revis in these first three games, this is a pro's pro. We all know what a talented player, but let me tell you, what makes him special, what makes him great is the way he studies this game. He's one of the smartest football players I've been around, and uh, it's impressive. A pro's pro is Darrell Revis. Hey. Revis top of your screen, matched up against Kimbrell Tompkins, one of the rookies for the Pats. Ridley gets a spin move and a Mandy. Ridley down to the 20. First down for the Patriots. Mark Barron came up to make the stop, but that was a nice run. Well, I said it early, but Stephen Ridley, this guy is a big time running back. His only issues have centered around holding on to the football. They get that fixed. This guy's one heck of a player. Went for over 1,200 yards last year. You see him holding on to that football for dear life after two fumbles in the opening game. 
Patriots have a first and ten on the 20, trailing 3-0 to the Bucks here in the second quarter. McCoy got some pressure, but Brady gets it off to Edelman. And Edelman tackled by Levante David on the stop. He's going to pick up four on first down. You look at the red zone offense for the New England Patriots. Traditionally, over the years, very strong. This year, towards the bottom of the league, 31st in the league, going against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, number one in the league in the NFL in the red zone defense this year. Last year, the Patriots were third in the NFL at 67%. Blitz picked up. Brady's got a man. It's Tompkins inside the five. Touchdown, New England. Tim Brown Tompkins with his first NFL score. The Pats go in front. 16 yards. Probably not the matchup you want. A defensive lineman, Adrian Claiborne, responsible for covering Tompkins. Tom Brady sees it, trusts again in his rookie wide receiver. And the, Tompkins, the rookie wide receiver, says, thanks, Tom, I'll take it to the end zone. Steven Guskowski will attempt the extra point. And that is up and through. So our first score of the game, first score of Tompkins' career, the rookie free agent out of Cincinnati puts New England in front. Kembrell Tompkins, his first NFL touchdown, and look at the reaction from Tom Brady. You gotta love it. Everybody getting on Tom Brady for being too tough on the young guys. Give me that every time, because you know what he's doing? He's making those guys better. He's got Darrell Revis in that new revamped secondary for the Buccaneers. And, fellas, we got Tom Brady on the other sidelines. We better come to play. Guskowski will kick it off and out of the end zone. And what did Brady tell us yesterday? Hey, these guys have so much on them. They've done a great job taking the coaching and everything. Brady acting as a cheerleader right there. Patriots jump in front of the Buccaneers. 7-3, 7-31 to play first half. This game is sponsored by Chevrolet. Check out the all-new Chevy Silverado at the Silverado vs. All event. Well, as the Beastie Boys blare over the speakers at Gillette Stadium, Tom Brady must feel like partying right now because he finally found a connection with his young receivers and his 51st straight game with a touchdown pass, he's almost at the record set by Drew Brees. He's done this before and he's, he does it well week in, week out. Buccaneers who really controlled this game find themselves trailing for the first time. How do they respond? Freeman going for Eric Page who makes a nice adjustment and makes the grab and a penalty flag to boot. Alfonso Dennard on the coverage, but Page was there would count as his first catch of the year. 22 yard hookup if it stands. Illegal contact. Number 37 in the defense. The penalty is declined. Result of the play is a first down. 22 yards to Page for the Bucks. Well, there's no doubt about it that Josh Freeman understands that they've got to get other people involved. Eric Page, he's the kick returner, the punt returner. I'll throw to him, too. They're going to take away Vincent Jackson. I'll get my other guys involved. It's working today. And credit to those other receivers as they're winning the one-on-one -on -one matchups. Kevin Ogletree top of your screen. Doug Martin is the tailback on a first and ten. And it's Martin with the stutter step. And he's going to work his way out to nearly the 49-yard line for Dante Hightower made the stop. Six-yard gain for Martin. And the other thing about Freeman is he's showing some confidence. You know, in the past, you've seen him kind of wait for guys to get open. We documented that last week. He's throwing the ball and letting the guys go get it this week. Well, who told us? Tom Brady, one of the greats of all time. Offensive football, it's about anticipation. And Josh Freeman's learning that today, throwing the football on time. And you, you like what you see out of Josh Freeman. He only had 125 yards last week. So you see he's almost there already. Vincent Jackson, top of your screen, matched up against the lead, but they go the run. And Martin, who is going to be... I think enough for a Buccaneer first down. Brandon Spikes on the stop, but that's a four-yard gain for Doug Martin. And look, Kev, you know, two tough losses, and everyone has been so down on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I'm telling you, when you watch the film, it's a quality football team. They've got a lot of talent on this team. I'm watching their offensive line right now. 
really control the action. You got Nicks, you got Joseph, you got Jackson, Doug Martin. A lot of talented football players on this team. They got to do the little things to turn that into wins. Doug Martin, 10 carries, 40 yards so far. On a first and 10. Freeman's going to tuck it in and run it. Let's go, let's go down to the field and check in with Aaron Andrews. Kevin John just mentioning Carl Nix being back in the lineup for the Bucks. We've had the chance to cover the Bucks the past two straight games. And, you know, I've seen him on the sidelines really trying to corral the offensive line in those past two games. Now he's in uniform. Now he's playing. And as you can see on their sideline before they get out on the field, that's really made the difference having him out there coaching up the offensive line. Well, Aaron, it's an enormous factor. Two-time pro bowler. Certainly the Bucks watching to see how his wind is after not playing it this year, but good observation there. Draw to Martin, and Martin works his way inside the 40, pushing the pile close to a first. He's going to be about a yard shy. Martin's going to pick up five. Vince Wilfork and others in on the stop. Uh, you talk about that offensive line, and in particular the interior, Zuta, Carl Nix, David Joseph. They're controlling this action. The Patriots defensive line anchored by Vince Wilford. They don't get pushed around much. They're getting driven back right now. It manifests itself with third down and short where the Bucks want to be. Can they cash in? I haven't seen Mike Williams this drive, by the way. Remember, he was nicked up a little earlier, came in for a couple plays, but not on the field now. On a third and one. Freeman's going to let it go deep for Vincent Jackson. In and out of the hands. Vincent Jackson has to grab that ball. Akeem Tlaib was there, but he was beat. And I like the call. Third and one. That's the situation where you're going to get the one-on-one -on -one with Vincent Jackson. I like the aggressiveness. Josh Freeman throws an excellent football. And Vincent Jackson got to catch that football. Perfectly thrown football. Off the hands. Good play by Tlaib as well. Tampa going for it again on fourth down. They missed on an earlier try. Fourth and one. Here is Martin looking for something. Good effort fighting for, but I don't think it's going to be enough. The spot is critical. It was Brandon Spikes making the initial hits. I don't think he got it. See Brandon Spikes coming in from his middle linebacker position. Again, has 30 no pounds on Doug Martin. Not even close. Excellent job of lineback play. Linebacker play by Spikes. Doug Martin fights all he can. The Patriots come out on top. So twice the Bucks have gone for it on fourth down. They'll measure, but he didn't get this. That time it's the fourth-year man, Brandon Spikes, out of Florida. If you're wondering about the name, he's the cousin of Takeo Spikes, longtime great linebacker in this league, and he's short. So the Bucks have twice gone for fourth down in New England territory. Twice they've come up short. And so the Patriots get the ball back after a defensive stop up, 7-3. Well, watch this by the Patriots defense. Fourth and two, the two linebackers. Hightower, he's going to come set the edge. And Spikes, he's going to come fill and clean up Doc, Doug Martin. Hightower coming. Eric Lorick, he crashes down. That frees up Spikes. He goes and gets Doug Martin. Terrific play by the Patriots defense. Well, John, you know, if you're the Bucks, here you are. You've done a lot of good things. You've had possession of the football longer than the Pats, and uh, you've got a field goal on the board to show for it. Well, you've got to take advantage of opportunities. Mm -hmm. They've had plenty, and that's what's missing from this team this year. You've got to cash in, particularly if you're going to beat the Patriots in their house. Toughest place in football to win on the road. And maybe most disturbing is Tom Brady got a little chemistry going with his young receivers in the last drive, hitting those guys, the rookies, three times on the last touchdown drive. First and ten pass, and they're going to go to it again. So all of a sudden, going to the rookies, that's Aaron Dobson coming up with the grab. And, and what do you see from this Patriots offense? You see rhythm. Tom Brady, we talked about him double clutching early. Now the ball's getting back. It's getting out. He's starting to trust in these receivers. They're earning this trust. Brady, seven of his last eight. They go on the ground here to LeGarrette Blunt. And he's inside. To 50, that's a first down for New England. Let's go check in with Aaron. 
just to add on Tom Brady looking comfortable, getting rhythm. This is what Gerald McCoy told me before the game they were worried about. We have to get in his face. We have to keep him uncomfortable. They felt that's what they did well against Drew Brees. He said, look, Brady makes guys a star. We don't care if they dropped a bunch of balls against the Jets. And Aaron, you know, early they were. They got two sacks early on Tom Brady, but you could see it. The ball is coming out quicker. He's looking for those young guys, and it's changing in front of our eyes. Uh, first and dead right at midfield. And Dobson that time had to readjust, couldn't make the catch. You know, one of the fascinating things with talking to Greg Schiano, he talked about that very subject, the young receiver. He said about Brady, he's grooming these young receivers. It's just a matter of time before they get it going. I just hope it's not against us. And I know Greg Schiano hopes that as well. Tom Brady told us, meeting with him yesterday, we really don't know what we're good at yet. You know, we have a whole new skill group, and, you know, it's almost by week 9 or 10, you have a really good idea of what you are. It's kind of evolving. We're seeing that in this first half alone. And a second down. And a fake and a good one, but Brady throws one into the ground. He was looking for Tompkins there. And there's a penalty flag to boot. On the far side of the field. Going to have a little illegal motion. I believe Edelman and Ho'o -oh Manawanui got that uh, in motion at the same time. Prior to the snap, false start, offense. Slot man on the left-hand side. Five-yard penalty. It's still second down. There's Edelman. There's Ho'o -oh Manawanui. You're going to see them move simultaneously at that point. It is illegal motion. There's no truth to the rumor that John and I sat in the conference room last night and kept saying whole Manawanui to each other. Um, well, maybe there's some slight truth. Let's just do with Tom Brady. He calls him Who-Man. So Who-Man from now on. <laughs> Second and 15 after the penalty. They split gold in the running back to the bottom of your screen. Brady all day looking deep for Bolden to stop running. Oh, man. Bolden might have had a touchdown, and there's a flag back at the 35. He stopped running. The Patriot fans, well-educated football fans, booing Bolden right now because you don't stop running on a Tom Brady pass. He had separation. Right of pass, illegal contact, 54 to defense. The five yards penalty, automatic first down. It's on Levante David, but that could have been six. Yeah, we talk about Tom Brady getting frustrated. That will frustrate him. You finish your route. Levante David, right about there on Edelman with the illegal contact past five yards. Good call by the officials. So the Patriots back in midfield. Stephen Ridley at tailback. And he gets the carry. Not much real estate there. He's going to pick up about two yards. Looks like Akeem Spence, the nose tackle, was the first one to get there. The Bucks a little thin in that interior line rotation. Remember Derek Landry, part of that rotation hurt Over. last week. And today we've seen Gary Gibson go down. That's Blunt. And Blunt inside the 45 brings up a third down for New England. Joel Klatt has our latest game break. Five right, thanks, Kevin, to Cincinnati. How about Clay Matthews? Forcing the Ben Jarvis Green Ellis fumble. MD Jennings picks it up. 24 yard fumble return for a touchdown. They cut it to 14 10 at the time. The Pack have added a field goal. It's 14 13 in Cincinnati. Kevin. Well, Joel, it was 14 0 Bengals before the Packers even got the ball, but that's obviously changed there. What a tremendous player Clay Matthews is. That's what he does. He makes plays when his team needs it most. As this will take us to the two-minute warning here in Foxborough. One touchdown on the board for the Patriots. Tompkins has it. They've got the seventh relief. Two minutes to go in this first half from Foxborough. Patriots in front of the Bucks, seven to three. And on the move, third down coming up, though, at the Buccaneer 45. They've got to get down to the 40 on this third and five. That's Stephen Ridley in the back with Brady. Edelman, top of your screen, number 11. Pressure up the middle, Brady airs it out for Dobson. Leapy can't make the play, and they get a late flag. Well, that was a late flag coming in on Jonathan Banks, number 27, the rookie. I'll take a look at this. This looks like an outstanding play by Jonathan Banks. 
You see a little early contact. I'm not so sure, though. I think that's football. That's interference. It's a good play by Defense, Banks. Number 27. It's a 28-yard penalty, obviously an enormous play. And well, Bucks penalties have been an issue the first two games. Today they've done a much better, much better job with it. That's now their third penalty. But here's what they call. I'm guessing, John. Yeah. On, yeah. On, on second look, he does get the hand in the face mask. That's not what they call, though. They call pass interference. Yeah. But there is some contact there to be sure. Balls at the 17. First and 10. New England. They've got all three timeouts, by the way. Draw to Ridley. Ridley, tough sledding inside of that Bucks defense. Mason Foster makes a stop after a gain of one. So critical for the Buccaneers. They've been excellent all year in the red zone to stay good right here because you just have to keep your team. The missed opportunities for the Bucks, they're still in this football game. You've got to keep it a one score game. Second and ten. Brady side test pressure finds Ridley, and Ridley is going to be taken down right around the first down. I think he's going to have it looking at the spot. And that'll make it first and goal with the Patriots with a minute six and counting in the half. He does have a first down. First and goal, New England. As we're under a minute to go. Tom Brady in rhythm. That's a bad sight for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He's spreading the football around. Good tackle by Levante David, but enough for the first down for Ridley and the New England Patriots. Patriots call their first time out of the half with 57 seconds to go. Up 7-3 on the Bucs and looking for more. They've got a first and goal. When we come back, 7-3, they lead it. Under two minutes, it comes from the booth. They're looking to see if Ridley did indeed get that first down. And it looks from our vantage point that he did not. A great tackle by Levante David. Uh, they called it a first down on the field, but looking at this upstairs, as it stands right now, it's a first and goal on the seven. As his Patriot offense has gotten in a little bit of a groove right now. Tom Brady now 11 of 16, 96 yards and a touchdown. Coming up next, the Visa Halftime Report. Kurt Menefee and the fellas will take you through the big matchup, Baltimore and Houston. Vikings looking for their first win, but they are getting beat up by Cleveland right now. And the Cowboys playing well at home against the Rams. Plenty to do. A lot of 1 o'clock games will take you around the league. That's coming up in another 59 seconds. As this is taking an abnormally long time to review this play. It is just got a minute to do it. Triplet underneath there. Taking a look at it again. Look at where that ball does it ever cross? Remember, the yellow line is not official, but it does not appear like he made the line to gain. After review, the runner was down by contact at the seven and a half yard line, one half yard short of the line to gain. It will be third down and one half at the seven and a half. The clock is correct. Well, that could be pivotal. Let's remember, let's remind you, last week the Bucks had a goal line stand against the Saints at the one-yard line. So if they could pull out some magic and stop them here, who knows? Absolutely. I don't think I've ever heard that third and one and a half from the seven and a half. <laughs> I like it, Jeff Trippett. Yeah, we're being specific here, John. This is 2013. We want specifics. The, the better. I like it. I'm just going to say third and one. <laughs> ten, 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 ten. 59 ten. seconds to go. They'll go to the quarterback sneak and Brady. Pushes the pile well forward. And that'll get it all the way down to the five and a half. And a timeout on the field as Tampa will call a timeout. They're going to look to try and get the ball back here if the Patriots should score. After last week's stunning showdown between two of the house's top fighters, the tension between Team Rousey and Team Tate spills over into the locker room. What's being called the new best rivalry in sports. Don't miss an all-new episode of The Ultimate Fighter this Wednesday on Fox Sports 1. And to find Fox Sports 1 on your provider, go to foxsports1.com right now. Tom Brady's so good at that quarterback sneak. Uh, 
Of course, he gets a little help from the front of his line, too, with Ryan Wendell and Logan Mankins, the five-time Pro Bowler left guard. You're right. I think he's the ultimate fighter. He is. First and goal for the Patriots. 55 seconds left in the half. Each team with two timeouts. Dobson, the rookie, in motion. Brady's got lots of time. Looking for Dobson. Can't make the play. Little in front of Dobson. It was Mason Foster on the coverage. You know, they bring the heat, and that's going to get a favorable matchup for the Pats. You're going to see Mason Foster right there. He's going to end up on Dobson. Tom Brady identifies it, puts a little shake on him. A nice play by Mason Foster. Mason Foster has really elevated his game this year. Of course, he had the 85-yard interception return for a touchdown last week. Tenth play of the drive. Brady line of time, end zone, touchdown, New England. It's Tompkins for number two. Kevin, we'll see on the replay after the kick, but that started up front. Tom Brady had all day. Jonathan Banks in coverage on Tompkins. He just can't cover him that long. Got to get some heat on Tom Brady. He had all day. And Tom Brady, when he has time, he'll hurt you. Guskowski with the point after, and it is up and good. And the Patriots have taken a 14-3 lead over the Bucks. 47 seconds ago in the half. Just watch it. Look at the protection all day long. Tremendous job up front. He works the pocket as he does so well. And like I said, you can only cover these guys so long and so much for the young receivers not being where Tom Brady wants them to be. Ten days of practice after the Thursday night game. Tom Brady said, I'm excited to see this thing unveil. And you see why. It's all starting to come together in New England. Well, it's worth mentioning. Coming in today, Kimbrell Tompkins and Aaron Dobson were struggling as Robert Kraft, yeah, he's happy. He should be 20th year owning this Patriots franchise. And he likes what he sees today. But these rookie receivers came in catching only nine balls of 31 targets and a bottle of percentage. Today, Dobson, four catches, 35 yards, including a critical catch on fourth down on their touchdown drive. And then Tompkins, two catches, 21 yards, two TDs. That's a difference. Well, the guys are delivering. And, and Tom, what you got to love about him, and as he told us, look, this is what we have. But his trust, his faith, after a tough game, you could see him only throwing to Julian Edelman, but he's involving everybody and it's paying dividends for the Pats. Biskowski, Page waiting back out of the end zone and the Bucks will have it on their own 20. 47 seconds left in the half and two timeouts. We've heard about them, you've read about them. Now's your chance to see Jay and Dan from Fox Sports Live do highlights like only they can. Stay tuned right here on Fox to see Jay and Dan on the postgame show. Then tune in tonight at 11, Fox Sports 1. It's Jay and Dan cover all the news from the world of sports. Fox Sports Live. Find Fox Sports 1 on your provider. Go to foxsports1.com right now. Still no Mike Williams for the Buccaneers. Remember, kind of went down on a fourth down play earlier. Came back in the game, but we haven't seen him in the last two possessions for Tampa. 47 seconds ago in the half. They're just going to get a draw. And that's not going to get it done. That'll get out to the 25-5 yard game. Vince Wilfork on stop. But looks like the Bucks are happy just to run this thing out at this point. He's got two timeouts, but they're not taking them. Freeman's going to throw one incomplete. And look, Kev, you know, look, we, we just said Mike Williams out. But to win in New England, you got to go win. You, you can't just ease into it. And we saw that aggressiveness early on, the fourth down, going for it a couple times. Didn't work out. I actually like the aggressiveness here. I think you got to stay aggressive. You had two timeouts. It's about trusting your quarterback. He's playing well today. He's developed a rhythm. Trust in Josh Freeman to make smart decisions. If it's not there, you hold the ball, you throw it away, and you go into the half at 14-3. You've got 47 seconds left and two timeouts. And now it's a 35 with 21 seconds to go. We can get it to Tim Wright, who makes the catch for a first down. Steve Gregory on the stop, and Tampa calls their second timeout. 
17 seconds left in the half. Let's get a preview of the Visa Halftime Show with Kurt Menefee. Coming up on the Visa Halftime, those guys will fill those seats as we talk about a busy week three already, including Ed Reed going back to Baltimore, AP trying to lead the Vikings in their first win of the season, and Rivers already flowing for San Diego. It's on the Visa Halftime. Kurt is always just so cool, whether he's in Times Square or in the studios in L.A. We, though, in Foxborough, Massachusetts, we're supposed to get a big-time rainstorm, but it's cleared out. We've had a beautiful day. Aaron Andrews down on the field, along with my time, All-Pro John Lynch on Kevin Burkhardt. Bucks with 17 seconds left in the half and one timeout, trailing 14-3. Freeman intercepted. Oh, that's the last thing that Greg Sciano wanted, to keep to leave his third of the year, and the Patriots have 11 seconds left here. My goodness. Absolutely the one thing that cannot happen, a keep to lead is going to undercut Vincent Jackson, turn and locate the football. That ball's got to be where Vincent Jackson can catch it and nobody else. A keep to lead, the former Tampa Bay Buccaneer, bites his old team. Josh Freeman knows that's a bad mistake. 11 seconds, Patriots have two timeouts. They're already almost in field goal range for Guskowski, who's got quite the boots. Career long of 53 for Guskowski. You gotta get to about the 35 yard line, that's it. That's Edelman in motion on first and 10. He's gonna swing it bold out of backfield. Good open field tackle. Darrell Rebus came up to make the hit. Patriots call timeout. I mentioned it last week, but Darrell Rivas, he's not going to be one of these guys, the high-priced corners that says, I'm a cover corner. He's a complete player. He'll come up and tackle you and tackle you well when called upon. See Rivas sit back in the zone with his eyes, come cut the legs. Just an excellent football player is Darrell Rivas. Well, Guskowski can hit it from 53. Right now you're looking at a, about a 58-yard field goal. You like to get to the 35 to get him a, a legit chance here. So five yards. Patriots have a timeout with six seconds. It is doable. Got to be quick, though. Three down. And now the Bucks will spend their final timeout after getting a look at New England's offense. Smart timeout to defend what the Patriots are going to show them. Every yard is critical right here as we talked about Goskowski and his range. This is what, you know, having played, I played for the last three weeks of my career. I came to New England. Never seen a team that practices more situational football. Every situation, I promise, this situation right here, they've been through many times before. Bill Belichick, that's something he does better than anybody in the coaching business. What do you have time from here for with six seconds, John? Well, it's got to be something to, something quick. Something to the middle of the field to set up Goskowski. Well, that's about a quarterback sneak. Quarterback sneak that actually gets four and a half yards. Unbelievable. And they call timeout with three seconds left. I mean, how can that happen if you're Tampa? Well, because you're thinking about everything else but the quarterback sneak. And Tom Brady sees the opening, the open grass. And I believe they had something else called. Tom Brady saw the open grass and just took it. That's just a brilliant idea by Brady. It gets him exactly what they need, Goskowski, to have a chance. We're see, we'll see where he lines up. This will be about a 54-yarder. Right around 53, 54. Let's see. Certainly well within his range. If you're the Bucks. you got to get a surge and get your hands up on the longer field goals. They tend to come out lower. It'll be a 53-yard attempt. The hold of the rookie, Ryan Allen. Danny Aiken, the snapper. boskowski has got the distance. And he has got it. 53-yard field goal at the horn of the half, and the Patriots up on the Bucks 17-3. We now go to Kurt Menefee in L.A. for the Visa halftime, which starts right now. We get set for quarter number three, 17-3 Patriots. Tom Brady hooking up with Kembrell Tompkins, his rookie receiver, for two touchdowns. Remember, you can follow your favorite team all season long. Just go to iTunes.com slash NFL. Well, the Bucks have certainly had their opportunities, and they've missed a lot of them today, John. Uh, 
0 for 2 on fourth down, a missed field goal, and then the interception late in the half. Well, they came out controlling this game, really had the tempo of this game. They were controlling the action up front. You saw missed opportunities, a missed field goal, an opportunity for a touchdown by a rookie tight end. Those are things you have to execute to beat the New England Patriots in their house. Meanwhile, Tom Brady got off to a slow start, but as the game has gone on, he's found a rhythm with his young wide receivers. Absolutely. The ball's coming out quicker. Those receivers are earning his trust, and you can see it happen. We're watching that trust be earned, and Tom Brady has delivered. Bucks get the ball to start the second half, and Guskowski, who routinely kicks it out of the end zone, does so again. So Tampa football on their own 20. And the Bucks really controlled this game early on, but just couldn't capitalize. See the missed field goal by Lindell. He pushes it to the right. There's Timothy Wright. The opportunity at the touchdown we talked about. There's the fourth down going for it. I like that, actually. you got to be aggressive. Puzzling last drive before the half. They look like they just want to go into the locker room. Then on third down, they try to push the ball downfield. This drive right here, Kevin, critical that they come out and get points on the board right away. Started off with a fake, and then Freeman hits Vincent Jackson over the middle for a Buccaneer first down. Jackson picks up 12 on the hookup. It was Aqib Tlaib on the stop. Here are some of the numbers for Tampa today. Williams had four catches early after coming in with only six catches total, but then got hurt. Played a couple of plays, but then missed the last two possessions. He's back in there now. Well, he is back in. I was just watching him on the first play. He looks like he's a little gimpy. He's going to try to gut this one out. Frankly, I saw him gimpy last week as I went back and reviewed the film versus New Orleans. I think this is something that's been bothering him since week one. Here's Martin, who just had his route altered by Mayo in the backfield. And he really blew that play up for Tommy Kelly. Finish it off. Look at Mayo. These are downhill linebackers. He's coming on the blitz. Tough to tackle Doug Martin one-on-one, -on -one, but he slows him enough for Tommy Kelly, Rob Ninkovich, and company to come and finish the deal. What did Josh Freeman tell us the other day against this Patriot defense? You've got to be patient. It's kind of a waiting game. Play turnover free, smart. They're banking on you trying to force something. Still plenty of time for the Bucks. They don't have to do that, but they need a little momentum on a second down and long not going to help as Freeman is dropped. Third sack of the day for New England. Chandler Jones and Tommy Kelly both there. We saw the success early on. Mike Williams up here. Going to work against Dennard. Early on, he was winning those one-on-one -on -one situations. Right there, a little gimpy. Josh Freeman holds it. A little too long, and Tommy Kelly and Chandler Jones bring it down. Bucks are four of eight on third down, third and 15. And Freeman is way off, looking for Kevin Ogletree. That would have been short anyway, and they'll have to punt. Talked about how critical that first drive was, and not the way Josh Freeman and the Bucks. Wanted to end up. You see him and Mike Williams talking. Tom Brady has established a rhythm. Hard to break that when it's been established. We'll see if this Bucks defense that has been so good throughout the year can answer. Michael Cannon will punt it away. First punt for the Bucks today. Remember, they did go for it twice on fourth down. Edelman, three touchdown returns on punts in his career. And he will take it out across the 27. And the Patriots will take over there. Josh Freeman not happy with that first series after the break. Patriots 17 to 3. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at Southwest.com. By Chrysler, imported from Detroit. By Direct TV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you've got to get Direct TV. And by Miller Lite. It's not just a good time, it's Miller time. 17-3 Patriots over the Bucks as Tom Brady will have his first possession here in the third quarter. Here are the numbers. Both catches for the rookie Kembrell Tompkins are for touchdowns. Aaron Dobson, the other rookie, four catches, 35 yards. And Brady has been efficient, has missed on a couple of deep shots today, though. And here there is a drop by Kembrell Tompkins. Well, the Bucks have some issues at wide receiver right now. Aaron has more. 
Yeah, Kevin, John's been mentioning how Mike Williams has looked gimpy even into la or last week. You know, the whole first half, they were really stretching out his left leg. Couldn't tell if it was the back of his leg. And then for Vincent Jackson during that last series, the trainers were working on his ribs. Uh, there's no official report, but that's what was going on on the sidelines. And finally, guys, Buck's offensive line just not happy over here. Really arguing a little bit on the sidelines. Well that's, well, that's not a good sign, that's for sure. Second down and 10. Here's Bolden going the right. Nice cutback for Bolden. He could be up for the races. Barron in chase pursuit. And Mark Barron saves a touchdown. But not before Brandon Bolden gets it all the way down to the 25-yard line. A 46-yard run. Well, excellent patience by Brandon Bolden. Watch, he's going to stretch, 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 put the foot in the ground and get downhill. Mark Barron does a tremendous job of keeping that from being a touchdown. Big run for the Patriots, uncharacteristic of this Bucks defense who led the league in rush defense last season. Marcus Cannon out at right tackle, number 61. Sebastian Holmer, their starter, not in the game at this time. Confusion on the handoff to LeGarrette Blunt, the former Buck. And a lot of work to pick up a short game. Well, confusion on the handoff, and that's because Gerald McCoy from the defensive tackle position, he nearly took the handoff. He burst through that line of scrimmage. Terrific player is McCoy playing that three technique and watch him get off the ball. My goodness, what a get off by Gerald McCoy. Ready. 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 Second and nine. And Brady's going to hit Edelman for another short pickup. Levante David, game. Sorry, sir. excuse me, uh, Levante David, just a tremendous player right there. They're going to catch the football, but how quickly can you get to them and make the tackle? Levante David, one of the faster linebackers in football, tremendous in coverage. He closes quickly, sets up a long third and six for the Patriots. You see Brady spread it around, two of six on third down today. And yeah, we get a flag here. As Cannon in a right tackle may have moved. Bad start. Number 61 of the offense. Five yard penalty. Still third down. Well, Cannon just came in on this drive. Not sure what happened to Sebastian Vollmer, their starter. This looks like, like Nebraska in the 70s. Brandon Bolton up there in the three point stance. I have not seen that in the last 10 years in football. That's funny. <laughs> Maybe we should call Jamel Holiday in Oklahoma to run the wishbone against them. That was bizarre. Third and 11 after the penalty. Claiborne on the rush. Breezes by Brady. And he has time to find his man, Tompkins, who's inside the 10 and down to the 6. Ahmad Black on the stop. 20-yard gain. First and goal, New England. Tremendous job by Tom Brady pushing up in the pocket. And Nate Solder, watch him up top. Claiborne closing, one final push. Brady steps up in the pocket, finds what's quickly becoming his favorite uh, target in rookie Kimbrell Tom Tompkins. The Gary Blunts, the former Buccaneer, and that tailback on a first and goal. Hey, you got him. Come here. That's Edelman in motion. And that tops him wide open. At that time, Brady underthrew it a little bit. Well, that's something you've got to expect against Tom Brady and the New England Patriots. Anytime you get inside this 10 is that hard play action. Tom Brady sells it. It sucks Mark Barron, the safety up, wide open. And it's the pres pressure from Teo Nessheim in Tom Brady's face that prevents the touchdown. Second and goal. They tried a quick hitter at Tompkins that time, and Brady was being squashed by Akeem Dent in the process, incomplete. See, Tom Brady started slow here today, been on fire ever since. Bolden in the game at tailback on a third and goal.
lot of time. Brady looking into the intercepted. It's Mark Barron. Big play for Tampa as Mark Barron picks off Tom Brady in the end zone. First pick of the year for Barron. Tom Brady, you can see the eyes. Locks on Sudfeld, the tight end. Mark Barron reads those eyes and delivers for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers with the big interception. Bucks needed some life, down 17-3. Well, Tom Brady locks in on Sudfeld, the rookie wide receiver, and you're going to see him double. Mark Barron on the inside, Ahmad Black on the outside. Very uncharacteristic. Locks in on his target. Easy interception for Mark Barron. And now the Bucks looking for a little life. Give it to Doug Martin, who makes his way for a five-yard game. Gerard Mayo on the tackle. Brady, yeah. Not thrilled. Everybody gets on him for being too hard on the rookie wide receivers. Believe me, he's harder on himself than anybody else. That's what makes him an exceptional player. Greg Schiano giving a little dap to Mark Barron, who's quickly establishing himself as a big-time safety in this league. Well, we heard Aaron tell us the report on the Bucks wide receivers. Mike Williams is now back in, but Vincent Jackson is not. Williams on the bottom of your screen against Tlaib. Second and five. Here comes Nikovich. Freeman unloading. Looking for Doug Martin. No chance. We've got a game break, and let's check in with Joel Klatt. All right, thank you, Kevin. And to Cincinnati we go, where the former UCLA Bruin rookie, Jonathan Franklin, his first career touchdown, that makes it 23-14 Packers, and that's 23 unanswered from the pack. Kevin? It really seems like the Packers just sign guys off the street every week and put them at running back and they score. It really does. 23 on answer. Vincent Jackson on the sidelines with a baseball cap. That is never a good sign. Eric Page, number 17, on the replace, and he's in the slot. Third and five, Freeman looking for Page. as a catch, but he's short of a first. See the Bucks come up short on the third down. And Josh Freeman, he's really thin at his receiving core. Remember, they came into this game without their top two tight ends. Luke Stocker and Tom Crabtree are both out with injuries. Now Vincent Jackson down. Mike Williams out there, but he's gimpy. And you got guys like Eric Page, the returner, playing wide receiver. Tough sledding for Josh Freeman and the Bucks moving forward. Aaron Andrews told us it was the ribs that they were working on with Vincent Jackson. And if he's out, that makes it even more tough. Here's Edelman on the punt return. Eludes one tackler. Edelman looking for blocks, gets a few. And a good return by Julian Edelman. Who's going to take it all the way out to the 35-yard line for Brian Leonard was there to make the stop. 15-yard return. Patriots in control. Their football. They're up 17-3 in the third. Never be without football. Get coverage of every NFL game on NFL Mobile. Call Star Star NFL to download it now. Greg Schiano looks on his Bucks trail at 17 to 3. And the Patriots have the football at the 35. And he finds a receiver over the middle. And he's got his first connection of the day. It's Michael Hulam and now Anui. His second catch of the year. 15-yard game. The Who Man. Former St. Louis Rams, Steve Spagnola used to call him Illinois Mike. Here's Ridley. And he's gonna have a short game. Adrian Claiborne on the stop. Well, Greg Schiano, certainly things aren't getting easier for him with this Bucks team expectations high. 0-2 and, and in a hole right now. And he and Bill Belichick have a tremendous amount of respect for each other. Brady going to find Dotson, his rookie receiver. Darrell Rebus is there on the coverage. And it'll be up a third and short, six-yard gain. You know, these teams practiced together this summer. And Bill Belichick's son, Steve, actually played at Rutgers under Greg Schiano. Went to Rutgers on a lacrosse scholarship when his eligibility was over was a long snapper for Shiano, and Shiano had so much praise for him, saying during games he would help me on the sidelines, talking defense, relaying signals to the game. Steven Belichick is now on Bill's staff for the Patriots. Here's a third and two. Yeah. 
Blitz coming. Brady hangs in and has a first down. As Dobson corrals it. Banks on the cover, six-yard gain. Here are the two friends. There you see Stephen Belichick at Rutgers. Bill said, you know, I went on trips with them. I was at Chiano's clinic. Steven Belichick on the left, Brian Belichick on the right, both right, on the staff. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait. On the first down, it's Ridley. I'm not sure if he tried to spin or try a little flea flicker there, but either way, he's tackled by Levante David. But one of the things fascinating to me, Kevin, we, we talked about that relationship, and it was born largely out of Bill going to visit his son, who started playing lacrosse later football, is the respect that Bill has for Greg Schiano. He thinks he's an outstanding football man. He had invited Schiano and his staff to come watch Patriot practices. But I found most fascinating, he said, look, I asked him what he liked and didn't like about our practices, and he was very honest, and I learned a lot from him. And that's what makes Bill Bel Belichick great, is that he's not above anyone. He's willing to listen to a college coach on what they do well and don't do well. Brady in trouble, and Akeem Spence has a sack. He bursts through the line. The rookie from Illinois has his first sack as a pro. Speaking of Greg Schiano, this is a guy that he has really liked. You see him working right in the middle. He gets that quick get off so important in the interior defensive line and pushes his way back right into Tom Brady. Big thrill for a rookie bringing down Tom Brady for a sack. Third sack of the day for Tampa and that puts New England at third and 19. Julian Edelman in the slot. Here comes McCoy. Brady side steps in. Who amount? Manal Nui on the catch right side. Breaks through the tackle and still on his feet. He's going to be a little shy of a first down, but he puts the Patriots in field goal range. He slipped through the arms of Mark Barron, and that's a tremendous effort. Well, Mark Barron, typically a tremendous tackler. Brady finds Ho Ho Manawanui, who does a great job of keeping his legs going on contact and getting that critical yardage that does put them in field goal position. Second catch of the day by Ho Ho Manawanui. This will be a 46 yard field goal by Steven Guskowski. He tied his career high with a 53 yarder as time expired in the first half. And he's going to hook it. Through. Guskowski is true on a 46 yard field goal with 338 to go in the third. It's New England 20, Tampa 3 from Foxborough. Well, this one started out well for the Buccaneers, but it's been all Patriots since. They've gotten the big plays, and Tom Brady has gotten into a rhythm with his young receivers. Terrell Rivas and company on their heels and facing 0-3 in the face. If they don't turn things around, it's 20-3 New England, the latest scoring drive where Brady was 4-4 on the drive. Kaskowski with a 46-yard field goal. And the Patriots with a 20-3 lead. Josh Freeman has a big-time rally on his hands if he wants the Bucks to get back into this one. Kaskowski will kick it off. Once again, it is out of the end zone. Josh Freeman takes the field next. His team is trailing by 17 here in the third. As you can tell, the Tampa offense has not exactly been on full throttle of late. They had good momentum going early in this game, but they had a potential touchdown that Tim Wright couldn't hold on to. Set up for a field goal twice on fourth down. They didn't get it, and then they've been going backwards since, and now they're going to start this one with a potential penalty unless New England jumped. That's the one area that Tampa... Neutral zone infraction. Defense. Defensive end. Five-yard penalty, still first down. That's the one area Tampa's cleaned up today. Only three penalties. That one's on New England. Let's go downstairs to Aaron. Doesn't sound like good news for Vincent and Jackson. Bucks officially say it is his ribs. He is questionable return, but he doesn't even have his helmet anywhere near him, guys. Yeah, that's not good. Now look at that. 45% of Freeman's passes, and you take him away. What's this? 
Bucks offense. I guess we're about to find out. Throwing the fact that Mike Williams is playing backed up. We've seen that. Here's Doug Martin. And he's not going to get much. Let's take a second to get a game break. Joel Klatt has that for us. All right, thank you, Kevin. Let's get you to uh, Cincinnati, where Green Bay continues to roll after being down 14 0. Aaron Rodgers to James Jones. Seven yard TD catch, 30 straight points for the pack. They're up 30 to 14, Kevin. And that's against a defense that's supposed to be pretty good in a defensive line that's one of the best in the league. That's impressive. Bengals are up 14 0 for you can blink, but now it's all Packers there. Here's Eric Moore, the fullback, who makes the grab. And Lori tackled by Steve Gregory on the play. And what a play by Steve Gregory. You, when when Lori catches this ball, it looks like no one's even close. And then wham, out of nowhere, here comes Steve Gregory. Playing excellent football for the Patriots in that back end. Patriots are excited about this defense, and rightly so. They feel like they have continuity for the first time in years. They're expanding on the package. And, you can see why out here they've got to make it to the big time defense in New England. They've got Doug Martin in the slot, bottling your screen. Third and three. Freeman goes far side, and that is going to be good enough for a first down. Mike Williams on the catch. They move it out to the 31. It's a pickup of four. You like to see the gutty effort by Mike Williams. I'm telling you, I think he's been hurt since week one. He's gutted it out. He came out early today, was on fire. You see him limping off the field right now. There's a hitch in his getty up, but he's out there gutting it out. Good for Mike Williams. On a first and ten, it's Doug Martin who finds a good seam, and Doug Martin works his way for a first down. He picks up 11. This young man, if you haven't seen him, this is a special runner. Doug Martin is. Went for 144 versus the Saints last week. You see the vision, the lateral quickness, the ability to jump cut, and then there's strength that's packed into Doug Martin. He's a smaller guy in stature, but this guy packs a punch. He's also got the ability, which typically smaller, compact guys don't. He can go the distance. He's got that top end speed as well. That was the longest run of the day for Tampa. And Martin looking to bid for another one. He's up the gut for a 10-yard pickup there. Brandon Spikes on the head, and Doug Martin trying to take the offensive load on his shoulders right now. Here's the vantage point I'm used to. First of all, you lose Doug Martin back there because he's tiny. He's a little midget back there. But like I said, he packs a punch. He gives up 30 pounds to Spikes, but he just drives him five yards right there on contact. What did Rex Ryan tell us? He's an under-the-table runner because you, you don't see him. I mean, just, that's a great shot. Here comes Nikovic on a blitz. He has Freeman who gets it away on a second and short to buy him. And he does enough to get the first down. And that should take us to the end of quarter number three. Three-yard gain that'll move the chains. Buccaneers have quite the mountain to climb against this New England Patriot team. Tom Brady having himself a good day. Not so for Josh Freeman and the Bucks. It's New England up 20 to 3. We've come to the end of three. Back for the fourth quarter after this. Fourth quarter here at Foxborough, where the Bucks have the football trailing 20 to 3. And they've got injury issues. Vincent Jackson, their leading receiver, number one target, is out with a rib injury. Here's Freeman. Back to throw. Has Ogletree wide open. He's got a Bucks first down. Steve Gregory on the tackle, but Kevin Ogletree, who has been seldom used with a 14-yard gain. And that's a welcome sight because this is a guy who has to emerge for the Buccaneers to be successful. Forget about Vincent Jackson and Mike Williams being gimpy and hurt. This guy needs to emerge. You need three receivers in today's football to take advantage of defenses as an offense. Kevin Ogletree's key has to emerge for the Bucks. So Ogletree in motion, the former Cowboy right now. First and ten. Pressure coming. Freeman gets it away to Doug Martin. And the throw was a little low, so it took him right to the ground. As Martin inside the 25 picks up seven. 
I'll tell you, such an emphasis on player safety. A quick whistle right there. I'm not so sure Doug Martin was down, was on his way up when Mayo touched him. But that is indeed what they call. Watch him, and I think Martin's on the way up. Yeah, you're right, John. That's an excellent pickup. Martin on a second and three. And we get a flag as Martin's going to pick up two. But this one may be going backwards. Holding number 76 to the offense. Ten yard penalty. Repeat second down. Well, they call holding on Jeremy Zuta. I think they might want to call mauling on Vince Wolfork because, my goodness, watch Wolfork right down the pipe. Jeremy Zuta, hello. He gets in and takes him back, and Zuta does bring him down. Good call by the umpire, but, my goodness, what a force is Vince Wolfork, a tremendous player for the New England Patriots. 320 pounds and can run all day. Rarely comes out. Great football player is Vince Wilford. Meanwhile, another penalty at an inopportune time for Tampa. And looking for Page. Incomplete. I like how you use tremendous. Tree and Wilford has the size and strength of a tree. A redwood. It looks, it looks like a big old tree down in there. One of the good guys, too. Does so much in this New England community. Done a lot along with his wife fighting diabetes. He lost his father to that. Great guy, great teammate, great leader, great player, Vince Wolford. Tenth play of the drive, third and 13. Pressure up the middle. Freeman lets it go. Incomplete. Alfonso Denner knocked the ball away. And after what looked like a promising drive, Bucks have a fourth and 15. Going to watch Ogle Ogletree working against Dennard. This is one of those back shoulder fades, an excellent reaction by Dennard, locating the football, getting his hand on it. The guy's an aggressive player. Plays tight man to man. Ogletree says, nice play, buddy. Like to see that kind of respect on the field. Bucks going for it here. Fourth and 13. Pressure up the middle. Freeman running for his life. Airs it out. Incomplete. Looking for Ogletree there. McCourty was there. So was Denner. And the Patriots take over on downs for the third time today. Denner claps his hands as Patriot defense doing the job. Game on Fox is sponsored by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. By Bud Light, official beer sponsor of the NFL. And by United Airlines, the world's most flyer-friendly airline. United, fly the friendly skies. You look at this on the fourth down play. Tough catch, yeah, but in, you're playing in the NFL. You got to make it. Josh Freeman puts the ball on. Kevin Ogletree got to come down with that catch. It's got to be at least five drops today for Tampa. They haven't helped themselves. Here comes a lot of pressure. But look at the wide open territory for Bolden on the screen. Into Tampa territory. Barron makes the tackle. But the screen set up beautifully as New England is moving. A pickup of 17. Well, watch the patience by Tom Brady. What do you want to do on a screen? You want to draw the defense in. And that's exactly what he does. And Mark Barron out there all alone. That's a lonely feeling for Mark Barron. Look at him. He's walking, walking in the park. And then, okay, you want to get on me? I'll deliver it to Bolden. Bolden's been a nice player for the Patriots here today. Draw them in. He led them to Providence. That play took so long, but it worked like a charm. And a first and 10 of the Buck 49 with Garrett Blunt, the former Buck, getting the ball. And not going very far. As a tackle by Deshaun Goldson. Well, here are the Patriots. Last five drives, two touchdowns, two field goals. And remember, they had the pick in the end zone, too. Could have been more. But you feel like there's been some steps going forward to kind of get this offense together again. Absolutely. But let's remember, I mean, coming in, they were 2-0, 2-0 in their division. I know. So for all the offensive struggles, this is what the Patriots do. They win, but you do. Over. As they start to face better competition, you have to like the fact that this offense is starting to click. And remember, they're doing it out with, without Gronkowski, without Amendola. And 
Brady on the fence, finds Edelman for a first down. Julian Edelman with the catch, Terrell Rivas on the stop, pickup of 12. What have you liked specifically from this pass game today? You know what I've liked? I've liked, first of all, you're starting to see the rhythm. Early on, we talked about it. Brady was double clutch, clutching. I believe a lot of that is because the receivers aren't where he expects them when he expects them to be there. Now the rookie receivers, the young receivers are starting to be where they're supposed to be. Brady is getting it to him, and I like the confidence he's shown in those young receivers. On the first down here is Blunt, and he gets tackled immediately by Levante David. He's going to lose yardage on the play. But consider for New England, too. You're right. They're 2-0. They're in position to go to 3-0. Rob Gronkowski is inching closer and closer to coming back from that forearm and back issue, and clearly he's their number one weapon. Danny Amendola's likely out a couple more weeks, but bring him back your number one receiver, and if they're doing this now, that certainly is promising for the next couple of weeks. Don't, don't forget Four Shane Vereen, a very valuable Four. running back who's out. They will get him back as well at some Four. point. So when you can weather the storm and cash in wins when you're struggling, what's that mean when you get healthy? Edelman, uh, the quick hitter over the middle. Goldston on the hit. But Edelman is going to be about a yard shy of a first down. 11 yards on the game. Meanwhile, if you are Tampa, as we look at the replay, you come into this game 0-2. You come in losing two games by a combined three points. Doing a lot of things well, but shooting yourself in the foot. This game started off well. You really had control of the game, John. But they're in a dangerous spot right now. Ridley is going to pick up the first. Dangerous spot right now, facing 0-3 in the face of all the extracurricular stuff, the outside stuff that's gone on in Tampa. Well, here's what you know. Here's what I know as a player. To win on the road in places like New England, you gotta, you got to take advantage of your opportunities. They did so many good things early. They missed opportunities. And when you do that against the likes of Tom Brady, Bill Belichick, and the New England Patriots, you aren't going to win, particularly here in New England. Ridley on the carry as Barron forced him out of bounds. And now the, the issue in Tampa is that injuries are starting to mount. Your mm. two tight ends aren't even here today. They left them at home. You get that Knicks, but you lose your number one offensive player in Vincent Jackson. Tough times in Tampa right now. They're a good football team, though. They've got a lot of talent on this roster. they got to learn how to win. On a second and eight, it's Brady. Looking over the middle for Tompkins, but there was a crowd there. Tompkins was there, and, and so was Aaron Dobson. Incomplete. You know, you looked at, we just saw the plays. The Bucks had a huge advantage early in the plays, but the Patriots have just made them when they've counted. The Bucks again, fourth downs, they've over three there. They're, they're missing in key spots. That's the story of, of the Bucks' year. Mm -hmm. I mean, you look in New York at the New York Jets. Uh, improbable victory for the Jets because Levante David, maybe the best defensive player, makes a bonehead play at the at the end of the game. When it matters most, they haven't delivered. Third and eight for the Patriots. Brady over the middle. That's Golden, who's going to be a hair shy of a first down, I believe, right at the 15. And need about a half yard or a yard more. It was Deshaun Golden on the stop. Pat's going to send Goskowski on once again. Kevin, really quick to wrap up the Bucks. Here's what I believe about Greg Schiano. I believe he's a good football coach. I really do. I really believe he brings a lot to the table. Remember, Bill Belichick, he failed the first time in Cleveland. It didn't happen right away. Not to say that Schiano is going to fail. He's got to adjust some. His players have to adjust to his style. When they do that, this thing, there could be a big turnaround coming in Tampa. Kaskowski from 33 yards out adds to the New England lead. 23 unanswered for the Patriots. Greg Schiano not pleased. Steven Guskowski adds his third field goal of the day. 23-3 Patriots. As you look at this Patriot offense and the offensive line, well, they have done quite the job. Dante Skarnecchia is the man leading that group. They've given Brady an awful lot of time today. And and really, the Patriots have you know, controlled this game. The stats maybe don't tell you that when you look at it overall, but they've been in control and taken advantage of the key spots. Kaskowski will kick it off out of the end zone yet again. It's been an afternoon of Patriots all the way. 
They built a big lead up by 20 here in the fourth quarter. Today's game is sponsored by Toyota Care. The NFL and all 32 teams celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month. Visit NFL.com slash Hispanic Heritage to hear the personal stories of Hispanic players in the NFL. 8-19 to go in the game from Gillette Stadium in Foxborough. 23-3. Patriots in front of the Bucks and looking to go 3-0. and And that's what they've done when they are 3-0. Super Bowl trips. A loss to the Giants in that undefeated season and then a win in 2004 after starting the year 3-0. You know, it's funny, John, you hit it. You're coming in, there were so many questions about what's wrong with New England. You know what's right? 3-0 is pretty right. I mean, that's, that's pretty good. As Robert Kraft, the chairman and CEO of the Patriots, looks on and he's owned this team for 20 years. So the president, Jonathan Kraft, to his left. And the handoff to Martin for not much for Tampa. Kurt Menefee has our latest game break. Well, you would think 35 yards total rushing for the game is not a good thing in the fourth quarter. That is, unless we do it in the Saints. Drew Brees scrambles in from seven yards out on the ground. Saints rolling over the Cardinals. Kevin, John, Aaron. Saints looking to go 3-0. and Freeman back to throw. And he's going far side. And that pass is knocked away by Dennard, who was on the coverage. There's the Kraft family, and I, I got to tell you, this is one of the class people in football. And you know, there's an old saying, it starts at the top, and I truly believe that here in New England. It's not a coincidence that their success has really taken off since Robert Kraft and the Kraft family have taken it over. Tremendous business minds that know how to win. They're great for the community and great people on top of it. Save the franchise. In this franchise, there are rumors about moving, and he's a Patriot fan. Season tickets since the early 70s. Freeman to throw it on third down, looking for Doug Martin. He falls down, and everything seemingly falling down on Tampa. A lot of credit to defensive coordinator Matt Patricia for the New England Patriots and his defense. Done a tremendous job. It didn't start off great, as you see Matt Patricia right there. But boy, have they played since the early struggles and played well. Michael Cannon to punt it away. It's Julian Edelman back deep in hang time. Flags fly. Fair catch by Edelman right around the 40. Now let's see what the penalty is. Also an injured buck on the ground. Devron Carr slow to get up. Tough duty in the NFL, playing that gunner position. You're double teamed, and then <laughs> here comes the rest of the stampede. Looks like Pamplona rather than Foxborough, the running of the Patriots. During the kick, holding, number 30 of the return team. Well, Tom Brady's got a touchdown in 51 straight games. He's got two of them today. His Patriots in front by 20 here in the fourth. First down for Brady and the Patriots. As LeGarrette Blunt breaks through. And Mark Barron's going to slow him down at midfield, but not before the former Buck picks up huge yardage in the Tampa Bay territory and Blunt is a 23 yard game. Well this is what you don't want to do is get sloppy as a defense. This is a defense that one thing they've done tremendously well is stop the run. We've seen two breakout runs saved frankly by Mark Barron here today. Uncharacteristic of this Buccaneer defense led by Bear, Bill Sheridan their defensive coordinator. Longest run of the day for New England by Blunt who rushed for 1939 yards and 14 touchdowns three years as a Buccaneer. And here is Rebus on the tackle after Blunt's short run. 
Next week is a Fox NFL Sunday doubleheader. Jay Cullen and the Bears battle Matthew Stafford and the Lions. We'll catch Eli Manning and the Giants. He'll take on Jamal Charles and the undefeated Chiefs. Then the Eagles take on the Broncos in America's Game of the Week or other regional action. All starts with a Fox NFL kickoff show at 11 a.m. Eastern. Fox Sports 1 followed by Fox NFL Sunday at noon Eastern on Fox. Hey, Kevin, we get to go out to Arrowhead and visit Big Red, Andy Reid. And so happy for Andy and the success they're having there in Kansas City. That team's for real. They haven't turned the ball over in three games. And they've gotten a bunch of turnovers, just like they did Thursday night in their win over the Eagles. Tom Brady on the day. A couple touchdowns, a pick in the end zone, which he wasn't thrilled about. But in his 14th year, sixth-round draft pick out of the University of Michigan. Four down, four down. And this may be one of the bigger challenges for him with all of these untested skill set players after losing his top five receivers from a year ago. But he could get some back, especially Gronkowski, who's getting closer. Dobson, one of those rookies, makes a catch. Here is that class back when Brady was drafted in 2000. Again, Brady in the sixth round. Chad Pennington had a real good career with the Jets. Mark Bolger, certainly good years with the Rams. But... Just goes to show you how hard it is to pick a quarterback in the draft, John. Unbelievable. and shows you that the draft is anything but an exact science. The fact all those guys went before him. And you see all these numbers. He stacks up. Unbelievable against all of them. And most of those yards from Bulger, who had a lot of success throwing it under Mike Martz. But what a career Tom Brady's had. And he's got such great perspective. He talks, you know, we talked with him yesterday about the challenge playing with these young receivers. He said, look, football's always challenging. It was a grind when we went 16-0. It's a grind now. That's what he loves about the game of football. Trying to keep the drive going here, third and four. And he's got Edelman, which should be enough for a first down. Mark Barron on the stop. But that should be good enough to move the chains. See where the official spot is. Bill Belichick roaming the sidelines. <laughs> I think Edelman thinks he got it. Well, they'll measure. And has a conversation with his quarterback. Chains are out, and he has got it. John, when you think about this New England team and Brady, though, you think about the coach-quarterback relationship. And clearly, obviously, talent is a big thing, but you know, Belichick in his 14th year with Brady. And I asked Tom about that relationship, and he said, only thing he cares about is what we can do to help win. Whatever it needs me to do, that's what I want to do. It's worked, by the way. Look at that record here at Gillette Stadium since it opened in 2002 as Blunt on a first down, taking it to his former team. Tripped up, but he gets to about the 31. Pick up of eight. Uh, Tom, it, it, it's so funny to talk to him because he talks so much like Bill Belichick. Now, we were talking about this Bucks defense, which he had great respect for. He goes, look, we're not just going to go up against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and single-team Gerald McCoy and throw comebacks at Darrell Rivas all day. That wouldn't be too smart, and it sounded exactly like Bill Belichick sounds. And, they really are the same person. They care about one thing, and that's winning. As Tom Brady put it bluntly, we don't have to worry about the BS in New England. Here's Blunt one more time. First down and more for Garrett Blunt, who bruises his way all the way down to the 15-yard line. Got a good block from Matthew Mulligan, and he picked up 16 yards. And this is something since Greg Schiano has been in Tampa. This has been a dominant run defense. Right now, you're seeing gaping holes in this Buccaneer run defense. A lot of credit to Dante Scarnecchia, the offensive line coach, 44-year coaching veteran, and the offensive line of the Pats. And LeGarrett Blunt all of a sudden with Over. 10 carries and 56 yards. Wait, wait, wait. Feed him again. The Patriots are these rushing teams. It just kind of sneaks up on you, aren't they? They are, and the Bucks were fully aware of it. We talked to Bill Sheridan. He said to win, look, we got to win the turnover margin. Number two on that list, we got to defend the run game. Everybody thinks about Brady in the pass game. When they're successful, they run the football well. 
and they certainly have today. 153 yards on the ground total for New England. As they are winding this clock down. Four minutes, 20 seconds ago, Patriots up 23 to three at Gillette Stadium and looking for more on a second and eight. Once again, and this time picks up a short game, if anything. Mason Foster came in to make the play. I go back to something we brought up earlier in the game from Tom Brady. And what he told us said, you know, we really don't know what we're good at yet. So, John, do you think he knows after this game any more what they're good at? I think they're closer, you know, and I, I, I think that's what football is about. And you have so much roster toner, turnover these days. It's about finding your identity each year all over again. And the team that is quicker and more efficient in doing that has a huge advantage. The Patriots have done it so well over the years. There's Blunt on a third down and eight. He's going to take it down to about the 11. To give him two yards. Don't forget that coming up after the game on Fox, the State Farm postgame show, and a lot to get you caught up on. There's a great game going on in Cincy. Packers up by a field goal on the Bengals in the fourth. This one I can't even believe. 38 to nothing, the Panthers over the Giants. I am stunned by that one today. Cowboys 31, Rams 7. That's in the force. If Dallas is going to take control in the NFC East. And Kevin, this is, you know, you probably lost the offensive player you could least afford to lose. And Gerald McCoy now hmm. injured for the Buccaneers. Just a stud in the interior defensive line has played at an extremely high level this year. Cannot afford to go without Gerald McCoy moving forward. Vincent Jackson's already out. He left with a rib injury. He's had that baseball cap on. Pretty much the whole half, and things getting worse for the Buccaneers. With 3.14 left to play. Fourth down and six. Buck's going to go for it. Uh, the Pats going for it. Excuse me. That's ever been in motion. And Blunt is going to work his way toward the first down, but a flag comes down. He's going to be short, I believe. Let's see where the spot is. It's close. But let's see what the penalty is. Holding 62 of the offense. The penalty is declined. Yep, so Blunt is short. Make the line again. First down, Tampa Bay. And the Bucks will take over as you see McCoy really limping now. Just get it get it he, he should be done for the day that should come from the coaching staff he's an important important player to your defense I'm all for gutting things at it at this point in the game they'll go start getting ice on it and getting ready for next week Freeman started off in a good groove but the Bucks wasted some early opportunities and then it's been Inconsistent from there. He's also been plagued by some drops as well. They'll give it to Doug Martin on a draw. And Martin skirts out across the 15. That's Steve Gregory on the tackle, an eight yard gain. Two thirty-five to play. Patriots in control. Freeman slings it for Ogletree near side. Flags everywhere. Ogletree has the catch out across the 35 against Logan Ryan. This is a tremendously thrown football by Josh. That's interference. Defense number 26. Penalties decline. Result of the plays. First down. 20 yard gain to Ogletree. And a one hand catch from Ogletree. Very impressive. The more he can get involved. There you see Rob Ninkovich. This is a guy, Kev, we had the pleasure of meeting with. And you talk about his journey. You think all these players are all first round. Not the case. This guy was cut four times before the Patriots pick him up. She so watched Freeman go back to pass. And somehow Page comes down with it. There's a nice spin move, and he's going to be tackled at the Patriot 34 yard line. Devin McCourty was there, but Page stayed with that one. Watch Eric Page working on Dennard. They're going to stay aggressive with the coverage, and Page does a nice job staying alive. Josh Freeman puts it on him. Last play for the two-minute warning for the Bucks. 
as they're going to dump it across over the middle. That's Brian Leonard. And the Buccaneers facing 0-3 as the Patriots have a 23-3 lead here in Foxborough. Minute 54 to play. Minute 54 to go from Foxborough. All Patriots, they're looking to go 3-0, up 23-3 on the Bucks. Story of the game. Bucks had chances early, but really have been squashed since then. They're trying to put a last-ditch effort together. They got a first and 10 of the 17. Freeman going end zone for Ogletree. He's out back of the end zone. <laughs> He's in the Ivy. I thought you're only supposed to say that in Wrigley in Chicago. <laughs> like the fight by Josh Freeman in this offense, continuing to stay after it. A lot of season in front of you. It hasn't started how they want. Like I said, good players. They got some guys injured. They got to get healthy. But some really talented players on this football team. Got to find a way to put it all together when it matters most. Freeman slinging it towards the end zone one more time for Mike Williams. And Akeem Tlaib was there to knock it away. These are two old buddies that have gone against each other in practice as a member of the Buccaneers many times. Akeem Tlaib does a nice job of getting that long arm up there in the vision of Mike Williams. Don't forget, coming up on Fox, the State Farm post-game show as we go around the league and take you through the scores. Some games coming down the wire. Lions up by a field goal over the Redskins. Packers holding on to a field goal lead over the Bengals in Cincy. Third and ten. Freeman has forever. Steps up, hit as he throws, incomplete. Jake Beckett's applied the pressure and hit Freeman as he let it go. I'll tell you what, these Patriots play until the end because Josh Freeman had all day, but he had no one to throw to. There was no separation in the back end. And Josh Freeman continues this frustrating year. You know, I think today on the whole, you saw signs. You saw signs of Josh Freeman spreading the football to people other than Vincent Jackson, getting Mike Williams involved, Ogletree. But you saw the critical mistake right before the half that has plagued him so much this year. Really, that inconsistency is what's holding him back. Freeman came in at 45% completion rate. He's under 50% today, and that's just not going to get it done. Here is the first three weeks for Josh Freeman. And overall, this team has been inconsistent. But, you know, I think... You know, John, when you look at the quarterback, let's face it, it, it does start with the quarterback. And Freeman hasn't had help today. They've had some drop passes, that's for sure. But, you know, when you're not even hitting 45 or 50% of your passes, that's not good. You've got to be in the 60s. Well, for it's the National Football League, and it's, you know, it's in a league where, where teams are set up. It's set up for success in right. the passing game. The rules are set up that way. And they aren't having that success right now. Guys are hurt. You can a lot of excuses, but it's not happening, and they got to make it happen in ten. Fourth down for the Bucks. We have to get through chairs. Freeman incomplete. And the Patriots will take over on downs. Once again, the Patriots hold, and we take a second to get a game break from Kurt Menefee. Well, we've seen this quite a bit over the last couple of years. Drew Brees hooking up with Jimmy Graham. Brees' his third touchdown, Graham's second. And this is a route going on in the Superdome, 31-7. They lead Arizona. Kevin, John, Eric? Wow, that's some game as the Bengals go in front. How about that? That is pretty insane. I and mean, the Bengals up 14-0, then the Packers scored, what was it, 30 unanswered, and then bang, here come the Bengals back in front. Wild game at Cincy. 60-minute football game, that's what it is. And see Cincinnati playing right to the dire end. Greg Schiano looks on as his Buccaneers, two tough losses to start the year by a combined three points. This one, though, wasn't as close. 
his Bucks will go to 0-3, and, and Bill Belichick's Patriots will go to 3-0. and So impressive by the Patriots. You know, Kevin, you, you talk about the analogy of a, of a top-flight pitcher in baseball. When they don't have their best stuff, they find a way to win. And that's what the New England Patriots, frankly, did in weeks one and two. They were struggling to find the rhythm offensively, but they found ways to get wins. They did it in the division, and today they put a total effort to get together against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Final 35 seconds and a reminder, we will have bonus coverage of that finish in Cincy where the Bengals lead the Packers by three with 3.47 to go, so don't go anywhere on Fox. A couple of friends, Greg Schiano and Bill Belichick, will leave here with decidedly different emotions today. One last knee, that will do it. As the Patriots win it 23-3 over the Bucks, they are now 3-0. Again, a reminder, we'll join that Bengals-Packers game, but we'll be back after this. The Fox World will wrap it up. The Patriots' victory by 20 over the Bucks today.